Hello, thank you for tuning into my video. I hope all is well. I want to thank God for everybody that uh, watches this video. I want to thank God for your life. Uh, I want to thank God for today. I hope everybody's blessed. <clears throat> so today I want to talk about generational curses. And this is something that it took me personally a while to understand. And generational curses are a thing. And we see it throughout the bible so the first example of generational kind of like a generational curse is the fall of mankind see when man fell death became appointed they became suffering the women started having uh pain during childbirth see our sins may carry on to our children let's read isaiah 14 12 to 22. Uh, to In Isaiah 14, 12 to 22. It says, How are you falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which this weaken the nations? For you have said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high, yet thou shalt be brought down to the hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall now really look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his priests and us? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But you are cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the remnant of those that are slain, trust true with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a uh, cock is trodden under feet, you shall not be joined with them in burial, because you have destroyed that land and slain that people. The seed of evil doers shall never be renowned. So see verse 21, it says, You shall not be joined with them in burial, because you have destroyed that land and slain that people. The seed of evil doers shall never be renowned. renowned. You see, it says, The seed of evil doers shall never be renowned. So, your children may pay for your sins because of your evil doings. So, like, th th this topic, it kind of reminds I will, it kind of reminds me of one time I was at my church and then my pastor was sharing a testimony. And pretty much from what I remember, somebody was, I think, struggling financially. And then a man of God had revealed to them that their father, who was doing some kind of business, used to dupe people. So like demons, or demons were fighting his finances and his progress. See, generational curses are really, really something that a lot of us don't really take into consideration. That's why when you're praying, you need to pray to break those curses. Because what what your what your fathers may have done, you could be paying for it. So I have an example. So I have an example. You have a you have a heavy smoker, and the and the mom drinks also, and then the mom during pregnancy is also drinking and smoking. That baby may now be subject to birth defects. That baby is now paying for the mother's sin because the mother wanted to be smoking and to be drinking heavily. Another example is. A woman, she sleeps around, she's fornicating, and then she contracts HIV. And then during delivery, the baby is also born with complications. So we need to understand that our, we, can, we may not only pay for our sins, but our sins could affect our generation. It may affect our children. It may affect our children. See the, see the body? 
See the, see the Bible talks about a lazy man shall not eat. It speaks about a sluggard man and a waster. They can be, they can, somebody can be born and if they don't plan out their future, then they have a lot of poverty and then they bring their child into that poverty and then, that, and then their child has to work super, super hard. And then they miss out on education because they start working at an early age to support the family. See, your, your sins in life could affect your children. Let's read Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. See, God deserves all the worship, all the praise, Jehovah. Jesus deserves all the praise and worship. And when... And when you're actively disobeying him, when you're uh, when you're actively doing idol worship, you're doing things that are abominable to God. God may visit your God may visit your your third and fourth generation. You see, generational curses are really, really a thing, and we need to make sure we break these curses and we avoid these curses. Let's read Numbers fourteen verse eighteen. Let's let's number our enemies. Okay, numbers fourteen, verse eighteen. It says, The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. You see, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. You see, generation, your sins may not even affect your immediate offspring. It can affect your third and fourth generation. This is serious. This is serious. And we need to really take this stuff into consideration. So how do we break these curses? We first start off as accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. You see, when you come into Jesus, you shall also repent and ask for forgiveness let's read galatians chapter 3 verse 13. It says Christ have redeemed Christ has It says Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, really curses everyone that hangeth on the tree. You see, we were dead in Adam, but we are alive in Christ. For to die in Christ is to gain. So when we accept Jesus as as our Lord and Savior. We're covered by his we're covered by his great grace. We're covered by his sacrifice. And we can start breaking these generational curses. Because when we're in Christ, we're no longer subject to condemnation, but we shall have everlasting life. 
So you want to also ask God to set you free. In scripture, it says the truth shall set you free. It shall be free indeed. So ask God to set you free of all these things, of all these curses that may be running in your generation. And now, since we've spoken about generational curses, let's also talk about generational blessings. Let's read Gen in Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. You know, Genesis 18, 18. And it was talking about Abraham. And all nations on earth became blessed through him. So because Abraham, let's read Genesis 18, verse 18. So it says, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know that he will command his children and his household after him, and he shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which have spoken of him. Wow. So Abraham became the foundation of many nations because he followed he followed and obeyed the Lord we all know the story of Abraham and Isaac Abraham needed a son he was finally blessed with Isaac and then he was asked to to, to pretty much sacrifice Isaac because it was a test and then he proved his faith so you so your faith to the Lord your following of the Lord can yield many blessings, not upon just you, but upon your children. So there's generational curses, but you can break those curses and yield generational blessings. Thank you very much. I hope you subscribe to my channel. You follow my message. You share it. And may God bless your generation. Thank you very much.